did some vacuuming, not sponsored by Dyson. Go figure. They, we, we actually didn't bother asking because I think I know the answer. But and then we also uh, scraped off some tape from the floor. So that's the progress so far. Going we'll to be working on building tables, shelves, wiring Ethernet, and stuff like that as well pretty soon. Before that, this video is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club's Daily Essentials Starter Set. This full grooming kit ships at $5 and includes trial-sized versions of the company's popular shave butter, body wash, and wipes, and also includes a solid, high-quality razor and a full set of cartridges. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash gamersnexus to get the Daily Essentials Starter Kit for just $5 and with free shipping, or click the link below. I'll let that soak. Oh, there's food. Yeah, I was looking they at They ate here and just dumped it on the windowsill. Come on. Okay, guys, so what we're gonna do is unload six really heavy shelves. You can watch the two sweatiest nerds in existence be sweaty nerds while doing this. These, uh, these are gonna be for our storage for all the stuff that we have, obviously. This one. Is it? This is the shelf. It's done. Um, we need to go buy six more boxes of these so that we can have more elevated shelf space off the ground. It's crazy how expensive it is to make one shelf that's two feet high, but yeah, all that work just to nice. See, Patrick gets it. It'd make a lot more sense if they would actually sell the shelves that are on the picture instead of just these boxes. Yeah, that's weird. fancy box of peripherals we didn't ask for would be the first thing that came into the office. Because we never made a video about it, because we don't review peripherals, but they sent it. So there it is. It's a box of peripherals. I'm not sure what's in here. We're gonna use these on one of the workstations. They sent this stuff over a little while ago, and like I said, we don't review peripherals anymore, so these never got coverage. They've been sitting in the box since they came in. And uh, set the mouse pad, which we use for competitive analysis for our own. So we'll put that on all the workstations. ROG Strix Flare, ROG Strix Fusion headset, and then a mouse. I don't know if they're any good. I'm not sure, but Asus was basically like, hey, did you guys ever cover that stuff we sent that you didn't ask for and that you don't cover? And I said, no. And I said, but you can actually use this stuff on a workstation genuinely use it for real, not just like do some unboxing video. And uh, that'll be, that's it. So there you go, Asus. It's covered in sawdust. It is covered in sawdust. The sawdust I don't think comes with the retail version of the product. Good marketing stick though. Uh, let's see what we got. I'm guessing this is Cat 5e, uh, so it can only do like a gigabit maybe. And we're gonna put Cat six, which if properly terminated can do cat can do uh, up to ten gigabits. But uh, one of the things we got to work out is we got to figure out are we going to change these little jacks or not. If we don't change the jacks, it won't be able to go to ten gigabit. But uh, we'll see. See what happens. So Patrick Stone is from uh, Conduit, North Kakalaki Engineering School. You know, okay, we're getting a shot upstairs. <laughs> this is a great one. That's a good shot. I think. All right, so Stone, what are we, what are we doing? So the idea here is that we're in pretty good shape because we already have wire run, which means when we pull the new wire through, we can just attach it to the old wire, and then you don't have to worry about figuring out how to get the wire down the conduit. Otherwise, you need like. Uh, 
wire gel, which allows it to reduce the friction. Because uh, getting wire through conduit that already has wire in it is nasty. Yeah. If you're not pulling it through. Yeah. So we're um, we're doing a Cat Six install. Basically, we're rewiring. There are a bunch of these outlets lower down on the walls with Ethernet in them, and we're some of them are Cat Five or Cat Five E. We want 10 gigabit internally for the NAS for 10 gigabit switch we've had for the rendering stations. So this is all going to be wired 10 gigabit. Is basically the plan. And that's a box with a thousand feet of Cat Six, which hopefully that's enough. But we'll see. What are you just cutting it or something? I'm just gonna put it in the ceiling. Yeah, that sounds good. That way, if somebody else wants it, it'll be there. Right. Okay, so it's called a DMARC, and uh, what it does is like it allows you to bring in equipment on one side and then equipment on the other side and join them together without having to worry about short circuiting anything. Because these two guys on this side are together, and then these two guys on this side are together electrically. Uh, so they're just bridged underneath. And then whenever you're ready to like allow this piece of equipment to talk to this piece of equipment, there are these little metal brackets that go in between the two. And that's how you sort of jumper them together. And it's old telephone technology from like the, I mean, shoot, 90s, 80s. It may even go back way past that. But uh, that's what I was trained on when I was first doing telecom and uh, network engineering. So old stuff, I'm taking it off. Nobody wants them anymore. Key for it, I don't think, yeah. I gotta just yank it off the wall. It's a T1 communications line. Uh, so you would, you would bring it in through um, usually bonded sets of telephone wire like this stuff over here. And uh, then you'd have a T1 channel and then there would be a card in here and that card would uh, work as the modem to make that T1 channel accessible for your network inside the office. But T1s were blazing 1.544 megabits per second. Blazing fast. And uh, again, nobody uses these anymore because they're too slow. All right, so Keegan and I just finished building this. Uh, this, we originally, this is a live stream set. We were originally thinking of putting this table back here and then having, we were gonna get like a pretty fancy like Husky workbench drawer with uh, 18 of the sliding drawers in it. So we originally thinking put that in front of me and this back there. And now I think we're going the other way because this is a deeper service, so it's 30 inches as opposed to 24 on that one. And I think it'll add some nice depth to the shot. And I also think it'll be, it'll, it'll look cool to just see all the drawers back there. Um, so that's kind of the idea right now. This is, this is the new table for, in the very least, the live streams. If not, also, I don't know, we may buy another one for the A-roll set because I do really like this table so far. 200 bucks for the table, 60 for the drawer. So 270 for the after tax and everything, stuff like that. Really not bad, better than what we have now. The difference is what we have now is expensive because well, I stained it myself and all that stuff, but also it is height adjustable and we never use that feature and that's why it wobbles. So this one, just like doing that would make the other one just, I could do that on the other table and take my hands off and probably wobble for a few seconds. This one's way better. So I have to actually try to move it. So anyway, that's that's a good start. We like the like the table. I think we'll probably end up moving it like another maybe foot or two out this way to just add a lot of depth to the shot. We could, I guess, if we wanted to, we could always orient it at an angle and do like a corner shot into the other set behind me or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. So anyway, that's a that's the first piece of furniture that's done. Other than the shelves have been underway for a bit now too. So we can check that out as we as we move along and progress. So here's the benefit of making our own product that we also use. Normally I buy those blue anti-static mats back before we made our own mod mats and those were like $100 each. So we have a box of probably about $800 worth of our own products, the GN mod mats. And what we're gonna do is introduce the first GN mod mat to the set table over there. And that's the one we'll be 
using for a while. Typically, uh, the way this works is I put a mat on the table and we use it until it becomes so filled with thermal paste, blood, and uh, water from water cooling that it just starts looking like it's 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 gonna be something you can use to clone me. So we'll we'll use this one until that happens over there. Uh, and then oh, we've also got two of the early samples of our blue glasses here that we're just gonna use for the actual like kitchenware because we made some samples of these that we ended up not selling, and uh, that's the best way for me to reuse them. So we can use them here in the kitchen. So let's introduce the first mod Mac to the studio. These, I actually like doing this because, like I said, we don't replace them too often because they hold up forever and uh, they can stand a lot of abuse, which we put them through every single day. So I like introducing a new one because it's an opportunity, opportunity for me to see, sort of really stress test to see how long it lasts in a real user environment like ours where it's super abused and uh, introduced all kinds of chemicals like for example our recent recent exhibition with the mod mat was to film b-roll of the new beer cups on it so now our main mod mat and i'm going to keep using this one because it's got so much history to it at this point the main mod mat has uh beer stains in the middle from the photo shoot of the glasses probably smells like it too it's got blood all along the bottom from when I sanded an IHS down and lapped it. And it's gone through heat torture, it's gone through soldering torture, it has exacto knife cuts on it from, uh, from when we were testing durability there. So if you ever don't have the key to a lock and you need to get in something, then you can take out the hinge instead and then have access to whatever this is. What we're thinking is uh, case storage. This is the storage room. <clears throat> that wasn't apparent by the existence of a lot of storage. So cases on the bottom. This shelf is going to be a clone of this shelf. And basically, uh, I was talking with Keegan about this where a couple options. The original plan was these against the wall and then probably about 28 inches of walking space here. And then the other shelf here so that would be these. And then immediately on the other side of that, there would be another shelf. So the downside is that if we had another shelf on this side of it, we wouldn't be able to access uh, the back half of the storage other than like coming through here and yeah, pull stuff out and then pull the other thing out and then you just start forgetting what's back there, <clears throat> which will happen to some extent here, but I think we'll just put like the, I'll try and make a system of like oldest stuff goes in the least, in the darkest corners before it's gotten rid of. Um, so the new plan instead of that is we'll have a bit more walking space, maybe like 30, 32, 34 inches, something like that. Um, these shelves, and they'll be accessible from both sides. And we're gonna have a third shelf where I'm standing, we'll push them back, like adjust them so they're all level and everything. Uh, and then <coughs> probably do like, Intel boards on one side and AMD boards on the other side. So we just, you know which side it's on when you're picking for a build. And motherboard library. Yeah, motherboard library, exactly. And then um, I don't think we need more case storage on these. So we're probably gonna just make more space for like coolers and boards, stuff like that. And then I think instead of the old plan of six foot shelf here, one single six foot, we'll do that probably here. That's the shelf that's against the old wood wall right now at home base. So that would go here and then the table in the back against that wall. I think that'll cover it and then there'll be some smaller table just like probably right here um, for networking equipment. So, or at least whatever, but we don't bolt up to the board will be on some like small just like basically school size desk uh, so that's the current thought of what we're going to do in this room and i think uh i don't know the weird thing for this is normally when we build a shelf it's because we already have all the stuff and we just need somewhere to put it so now we're going to build a shelf and have all the stuff and then all the shelves still won't be full so 
first time ever, GN will have more storage space than stuff. Yes. That will last for one month. Yeah. All the manufacturers will will see that clip of what Keegan just said and start sending us things that I don't want, like headphones. So this is just a, a wall jack. Okay. Um, and so like, one of the things I was reading on was just trying to figure out what's the difference between a Cat 6 wall jack and a Cat 5 wall jack. Yeah. And the answer is not much. Okay. Um, there are some uh, that, that claim to give um, a better signal by lining these jacks up in the fashion so these things are pointing backward. Mm -hmm. So you have equal amounts of wire coming out. The way this works, whichever if you're using 568A or 568B is, or TIA, EIA standards, um, it, like the, the blue pair or the orange slash green pair would be stretched out longer okay. than the brown and the orange mm -hmm. green on this side. Um, and supposedly just that little like extra centimeter can lose you signal. And uh, so the difference in the six and the five on the wall jack is apparently the way the wires are arranged. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the actual RJ45 plug, uh, they are up, down, up, down, up, down. Again, so the signal's not crossing over and not getting crosstalk. Yeah. So we're getting near the end of day one. It's been all day here. We had a full team out here. So Patrick Stone still working on the Cat 6 wiring. He's basically, I don't think we explained it fully before, but we have Cat 5 and Cat 5e in the walls right now. And we want 10 gigabit internally for access to the server. So this is all getting rewired in the walls. These outlets up at the ground or near the ground are going to be Cat 6 now, so that'll be nice. And this is the closest thing I have to a video set right now. So <laughs> it's got um, got some cardboard recycling on it that we can use to protect the table from the pizza grease and the cheer wine spills and stuff like that. So yeah, I guess I'll show you through. Basically, I need to buy or get or ask for a sponsor for a table for that spot over there. I'm hoping to get one of those uplift or auto desk, whatever that not not auto desk like the software company. Something that raises and lowers every year, that'll be nice. Have to paint this wall, put up the tool board. I don't know what to put on this wall, if anything. So this is gonna have like a, one of those nice husky uh, sort of tool cabinets back here for the set mostly. And I don't know what will go above it. So we'll figure that out later. But if you have any ideas, let us know. By the time you see this, we probably finished it though. So. Uh, I guess more I've seen if you got the same thing we did. All right, this room has had a good amount of progress. But overall, progress for the first day has been pretty crazy, actually. So, like I said, uh, Stone working on the Cat 6 stuff. I was working with Keegan on moving these tables in and out of the storage uh, and into this space. Uh, Andrew and Patrick worked on building shelves, which we'll look at in a moment. We did all kinds of stuff in between, like just vacuuming everything, cleaning up and making sure the space was uh, overall ready to move into. So yeah, we cleaned everything up. We went through all these tables. These are used, check the screws and all that stuff, bought some extras. Uh, some of these receptacles are out of the wall right now for new wiring for Cat 6. And then the nature of needing so many tables is that it's really expensive to get tables, like really expensive. So it's gonna be a bit mismatched. Uh, fortunately, they're the same length and width and just different tops, but every table is going to have mod mats on it and every table is going to have computers and test benches on it, so by the time it's all filled, the differences between this and that table are not going to be that prevalent, and we're not filming in here that often anyway. So I really like these aesthetically, a little wobbly. These, are, these ones are pretty heavy duty computer tables, a bit ugly, but you know, we'll deal with it, it's fine. Got a, Gotta find places to save money so we can invest in things that make more sense to invest it into. So yeah, two of these here, this table will push against that wall. I think I'm gonna be left with about six feet here I need to fill with the table. Then we're gonna put these uglier ones all the way down this wall and at the end probably like a small shelf for um, keeping like uh, active bench components just so we don't have to keep running in and out of different rooms. Get them. Then I'm gonna get a cart, like a trolley, so we can move benches from here 
to the live stream area when we're ready to do live streams. Just put it on a cart, wheel it out there, and it'll be ready to go. So pretty good progress for this room as well. Still a lot of stuff to do, but uh, let's let's look at the shelving. All right, so this room we have. This is the room where I don't know if the video, the clip from Lowe's will make it into the final cut, but originally I was going to buy two six foot long shelves for each, for this spot and for this spot, so four total, and that would have been like fifteen hundred dollars shipped. And we end up buying just six four foot long ones instead, which is the same amount of space. It's just uh, like three hundred sixty dollars. So saves a lot of money. Use that to buy other things we need in here, like the uh, cobalt set table in there for the live stream, bought a refrigerator, bought other stuff that drawers, stuff like that. So yeah, we're gonna have three of these back here and then three more here. Still need to build one. Probably move these a little closer together. And we're gonna add, I don't know, more shelves or a table in here or something like that. More shelves. Yeah, more shelves. And we've got wiring going in now. Still waiting on the router to come in from the ISP, but uh, so that's that's what it's looking like in this room. This room had a lot of progress. The shelf builds were faster than any time ever before, and I think that is because we brought two mallets. Normally, uh, Andrew and I in the past, when we built these, I guess the first time you build these shelves, it's always going to take a couple hours because you realize how much they fall apart. But I don't know, you guys knocked all of these out in what, like, I think you got had three done inside of an hour or something like that. So. And that's just because, like, using proper tools and knowing all of their faults made it quick. All right, last room to look at is the one that has had zero progress. So last room, there's our shopping list we had earlier. Uh, and this one has had zero progress, so basically I just, I need to buy a lot more tables. I need more tables for that room on the other side. I need tables for this room. I have three from the existing office we're gonna use. But here's the thing for perspective, we have like one, two, three, four to sometimes five tables we work on in the office for test benches. Uh, and more realistically, it's like three on a daily basis. So we're more than doubling, we're like tripling or quadrupling that count. And that means that I can run air cooler test benches, fan test benches, power supply test benches, have them all there, all the time, ready to go. So when we get something in, we can gotta knock it out inside of a couple days and get a review up. So it'll really enable more technical content. This room, I'll tell you more about it after we start filling it in. But um, yeah, more tables for here, and we'll talk about that more later. All right, so that's it for day one. We might split this into multiple videos just in case we do. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us, help us out directly. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of these teardown shirts or one of the GM mod mats that we featured in this video. And hopefully day two goes equally well. Subscribe to catch that. I'll see you all next time.